My name is William Adams. I'm the chairman of the National Endowment for the Humanities, and I'm from Portland, Maine. You know, the public space, the public world, the world that we all inhabit as citizens of the country is so full of humanity's rich questions and challenges. Uh, we live in some very challenging times with some very challenging questions, and we need the humanities to help us address these challenges. Take, for example, the extraordinary changes that we've been living through with respect to technology and science and how that those forms of thinking and innovation have changed our lives. All of those questions are really questions about how we live and how we conduct our lives. And those are the places in which the humanities thrive. They're questions about our experience and how we experience the world. Another wonderfully powerful place that we're all challenged in this time is in terms of what it means to be a citizen in contemporary American democracy. To be an active and engaged citizen of the country, we need to understand its history. We need to understand its political values. We need to understand the cultural world around us to understand how to be engaged, capable citizens of this democracy. And there, too, the humanities are hugely important. So there are a whole variety of ways in which the ways in which we live require the understandings and forms of knowledge the humanities provide. And that's one of the ways in which they're so important in the current world in which we live. The humanities, like the sciences, like the social sciences, uh, respond to sort of imperatives that come from within the disciplines. But I would say some of the trends are these. I think the humanities are uh, increasingly global uh, in their outlook. They're not so uh, narrowly focused on specific cultural traditions or specific places in time. They're becoming much more interdisciplinary, I think, over time, more interconnected, more interested in what's happening over in anthropology, if you're a literary scholar, or over in philosophy, if you're an anthropologist. And in those ways and others, I think, they're becoming much more interdisciplinary. I think they're becoming much more publicly engaged as well. I think humanists are taking up some of these grand challenges in the public world that I talked about and are becoming much, much more interested in the relevance of the humanities to public life. We're natural allies because we deal with very many of the same conditions and attributes of, of human life, I think uh, the most obvious and natural alliances are in the places where the humanities and the arts intersect in art history, for example, and in the exploration of past expressions of art. But I think there are much more adventuresome places in which uh, they can be engaged. Uh, we're certainly aware of the powerful influence of art and design in economic life and in corporate life, in innovation out in the, the economy. And that's a place in which humanities and human, humanists are also increasingly deployed, understanding what's happening in the business world, understanding what's happening in the corporate world, understanding what's happening in the economy generally. So I think there are a lot of natural alliances there uh, as well. We have deep alliances in the educational sphere, and I think we ought to be collaborating as much as possible in advancing our common interests in education. So I think in all of those ways there's, there's a lot of opportunity. One of the most important currently at NEH is called the Common Good, the Humanities in the Public Square, where we're trying to demonstrate the relevance of the humanities to some of these broad issues in public life uh, that I mentioned. And we're uh, rolling that program out into our grant lines and trying to uh, engage scholars and organizations uh, in very particular forms of humanities work in their communities. One of the most interesting is a program we call the Humanities in the Public Square, which is funding community organizations in partnership with community members grappling with questions of deep significance to the communities. Uh, we have a, a current set of proposals for initiatives that we're working on uh, in that sphere, which are very interesting. And um, we're also working in interesting ways 
uh, in the digital sphere with the humanities. We're working in some very interesting ways um, in um, scholarship, trying to make scholarship more publicly accessible and meaningful to people and to broader audiences. Uh, so this, this notion of the public humanities is an area of real concentration and innovation for us. We've obviously played a huge role over that 50 years in advancing the work of individual humanities scholars, but also humanities organizations, colleges and universities, museums, libraries, cultural organizations of all kinds over the country. And over that period of time, partly because of our investments, partly because of the investments of the NEA, the National Endowment for the Arts, that cultural ecosystem of the country has grown uh, and is much stronger now in many ways than it was 50 years ago, and much bigger, and involving many, many more Americans than it did 50 years ago. Uh, so I think the impact on what I'm calling the cultural ecosystem of the United States has been very significant uh, and, and important over that time. But just as important, I think, has been the symbolic impact of NEH and NEA. We have stood for the importance of culture uh, in the country and the importance of a national investment in culture over this 50 years, and I think that symbolic importance is hugely important to what we do, and it's very important to the publics we serve. So it's both at the level of funding and symbolism, I think, that these 50 years have mattered most.